Hello dear students, in this section today I will discuss regarding the COVID-19 in children and I will be giving you the guidelines according to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So these are guidelines according to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the COVID in children we say can be asymptomatic, mild, moderate or severe. Now asymptomatic as the name indicates you will get here that there are no symptoms. There are no symptoms. So what it is? Either it was a suspected contact. There was a, there was a child who came with a, a contact of a person who was COVID positive. So that came out to be COVID positive. Or this is child which is incidentally detected. Incidentally detected. But here there are no symptoms present. When you simple say a mild case, you just remember the way of remembrance, the symptoms are of upper respiratory infection. That is the easiest way to remember. Now if there is URI, there can be presence of fever, there can be presence of rhinorrhea, there can be presence of sore throat and there can be presence of cough but the important is without difficulty in breathing, without difficulty in breathing. So the way to remember the symptoms which are present in the mild case of the COVID in the children are just equivalent to the upper respiratory infection. Then we come to the moderate case and in the moderate case you can easily remember just by it are the symptoms which are present in the viral fever plus GIT symptoms plus GIT symptoms. If you remember this, you can remember all the symptoms. Now, for example, if somebody gets a viral fever, what is there? There can be body ache or there can be headache, body ache or the headache. There is malaise and there is weakness. There is weakness. So these are the symptoms of the viral fever. Then I see of the GIT. So there can be what? There can be vomiting. There can be nausea there can be abdominal pain and there can be diarrhea. So these basically are the symptoms seen in the GIT. Apart from this, there can be loss of sense and or, or taste. So this is important now. The loss of sense and or, or taste that is included in the moderate case of the COVID, moderate case of the COVID-19 in the children. Then if we go to the severe cases, now as the name indicates severe, so everything will be severe here. Either the child can have severe pneumonia or there can be acute respiratory distress syndrome or there can be features of septic shock or multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. Multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. So this is the four things you can get in the severe case of a COVID-19 in the children. Now if you go particularly to the examination, if we talk of the examination, that is based on the certain criteria. First we say is the respiratory rate. Here it is normal. Here it is normal. And here it is rapid respiration. Here also it is rapid respiration. Right? SpO2 on the room here. Here it is more than or equal to 94%. Here also more than or equal to 94%. In the moderate, it is less than 94%. In the severe, it is less than 90%. So severe basically means SpO2 is less than 90%. Grunting severe retraction of the chest, they are absent here. Here also they are absent. Here they are, they are absent. Here may be present, may not be present. Both it is there. Same is with the lethargy plus minus. Same is with the Caesar. That is, is absent. It is plus minus. Right? So now in the case of asymptomatic, where it is to be treated, only the home isolation is required. And you tell the parents for the teleconsultation if required. In the case of mild home isolation, that is teleconsultation, or you can take a child to a COVID care center, COVID care center. But in the case of moderate, in the case of the moderate, if you particularly see, 
here in the case of moderate the child is admitted in the dedicated covid health care center this is dedicated or covid 19 hospital covid 19 hospital and this is a severe case and if it is a severe case the child needs to be admitted into the icu of the covid 19 icu of the covid 19 hospital right so this is based on the symptoms and the signs you are categorizing the children now which all investigations do we need to do which all investigations do we need to do now if you consider asymptomatic no investigations required in a case of mild again no investigations required in a case of moderate one you require is cbc which includes esr also cbc including esr then it is chest x-ray and then here is the blood sugar level blood sugar level so these are the investigations which are required in a moderate in a case of severe what was required in the moderate plus means that is required in the moderate that needs to be done plus lft kft liver function test we are saying is lft kidney function test plus crp plus serum ferritin so according to the ministry of health and family welfare guidelines these are the investigations which they recommend to be done in a severe case of covid right so lft kft crp and the serum ferritin then we go to the treatment now if we go to the treatment in the asymptomatic there is no treatment required there is no treatment required now in the case of mild i told you it is just like a features of uri so URI basically means one is fever and one is some problem in the throat. So for the fever, what you like to give is, you will like to give is the paracetamol plus you need to soothe the throat. You basically want the throat should be, some soothing should be given plus warm saline gargles, plus warm saline gargles. Now in a case of moderate, if you see the saturation is less than 94%. So our first concern here should be to give the oxygen and you want to keep the SpO2 between 94 to 96%, 94 to 96%. Then being in a child, fluid and electrolyte balance, being in a child, fluid and the electrolyte balance needs to be maintained. Fluid and electrolyte balance needs to be maintained. That is important particularly in a child oxygen and the fluid and the electrolyte balance needs to be maintained. And then for the fever you are giving here is, for the fever here you are giving is paracetamol. For the fever you are giving here is say paracetamol. Now in the severe also the same things to be understood the initial steps that is oxygen. Second is the fluid and electrolyte balance. This is important in a case of a child fluid and the electrolyte balance needs to be maintained needs to be maintained right now apart from this what else we should do in the moderate now in the, the there are two major things should we give antibiotics or not should we give steroids or not so the what the guidelines clear cut say regarding the use of antibiotics here no antibiotics particularly no antibiotics in the mild also we say no antibiotics, no antibiotics. Here basically we say no steroids and here also we say no steroids, no steroids, right. In the moderate we say antibiotics are added, antibiotics are added if there is, if there is particularly suspicion or there is definite super added infection. There is definite super added infection, right? So antibiotics are only to be added. And in the moderate, regarding the steroids, they are not usually given. The steroids are not usually given. They are only given in rapidly progressive disease. They are rapidly given in the, they are only given in the rapidly progressive disease, right? Now, if you consider in the severe, 
or again the antibiotics guidelines are the same they are only added if there is suspicion or definite super added bacterial infection steroids are given steroids are given so if you see the clear cut guidelines where we give the steroids in the covid 19 in the children that is the severe cases of covid severe cases of the covid right so this was regarding the features particularly the signs and the treatment now certain other points to be remembered now what is the rapid respiration the guidelines remains the same which we use particularly for the pneumonia if you see less than 2 months it is more than or equal to 60 per minute 2 to 12 months more than or equal to 50 per minute 1 to 5 years more than or equal to 40 per minute more than 5 years more than or equal to 30 per minute so you should be able to know that what you mean by the rapid respiration then regarding the antimicrobial use guidelines i am talking them separately also already i have talked with you no role in the management of uncomplicated there is no role particularly if it is a asymptomatic and mild cases antibiotics are not recommended for prophylaxis or therapy so please remember in the mild case only fever paracetamol and soothe the throat that is it is required antibiotics are not recommended moderate in the severe cases antimicrobials are only prescribed if there is clinical suspicion or there is evidence of the super added infection otherwise the antimicrobials are not required otherwise the antimicrobials are not required then the important remdesivir this is not recommended in the children at all this is actually speaking not recommended below 18 years of age so this remdesivir is not recommended in the children lastly here i talk of the steroids because this is important one we already had a question in the insert exam regarding this so we basically want to discuss here this steroids in the asymptomatic in mild cases they are not indicated they are not indicated in the moderate i al already told you they are only given in the rapidly progressive disease rapidly progressive disease and in the severe they are given but they should be given under direct supervision and you two things you need to remember when to when they are started how long they are given and what is the dose of these steroids so if you see you are giving dexamethasone the dose is 0.15 mg per kg maximum 6 mg and only once a day so the only the dose given is once a day or you can give is the methyl prednisolone 0.75 mg per kg maximum is 30 mg once a day right now the thing to be remember is first this avoid steroids in the first 3 to 5 days since onset of symptoms right so the first 5 days idly speaking you should not add the steroids as it prolongs the viral shedding as it prolongs the viral shedding once you start it you should continue for 5 to 7 days and then you should gradually taper uh, for up to 14 days depending upon the clinical assessment on the daily basis right so this is a important topic a small one but it's a very important topic and this will be very very helpful go through this once again antibiotics steroids oxygen fluid electrolyte balance this all needs to be remembered and do subscribe to this channel for the more videos thanks